Am I listening? Strange, it's me, the Phantom. My god, where the hell are you? I've been waiting for your call for the whole damn month. Yes, I know, I'm sorry. It's just that there are some problems at work. The internal investigation department conducted interrogations and looked for spies. Your activity is significantly stirring up our hornet's nest, but it's probably for the best. Area 51, the leak about John from the farm, the hidden data about Trump on the eve of his election campaign, all this angers the leadership. This means that everything is not in vain, and in more detail. I'm sorry, I can't tell you the details, but I want to wish you a happy birthday, and at the same time to give you a small gift. I think this special case will really interest you. Check your email. I sent you something intriguing from the left email. Okay, I'll take a look. Yeah, I got it. What, a DR recording? Are you kidding me, Phantom? It's not equal Fool's Day, Strange. Take a closer look at the recording and show it to those who are primarily interested in such things. According to the recording, everything happened on that very Dan road to nowhere. You've probably heard of her. In the letter, you will also find the report of our experts with their comments and notes. Go through it, you might need it. The people depicted there had just turned onto this road, and thanks to them, we now know exactly what is happening there and why people disappear without a trace. Sorry, Strange, I don't have much time. Once again, happy birthday to you. Give me the light, we'll call you again in a week. Take care of yourself. And the man on the other side of the phone line hung up. And you take care of yourself, I said in the silent phone, and turned on the recording. What I saw struck me to the core. Underscore, 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 underscore. How long do we have to go, son? You drive my 250 Ford like that, and we'll never get to your grandma, Stacy. And your sister, by the way, is getting married tomorrow. Yes, yes, I know that you don't like the way I drive. But do you see the way? It's very bumpy, we'll hit a rock, and we'll be stuck here for even longer. Do you need it? No need? Well, that's it. And this banderina? Why do we need a camera? So the feds can eavesdrop on our conversation. Oh, Dad, stop it. Your Cold War paranoia annoys me. This is a DVR, and he's not recording. The memory is overflowing there. Did you hear that? Vindia re histrator ot clue chat. Yes, I heard it, I heard it. Don't repeat it to me here, I'm not deaf. A man who sounded about 60 years old answered the young guy. Well, that's great. Listen dad, I know you'd like to drive your own Ford, and I would be glad of that. You sit in the passenger seat, and sleep all the way. But you said yourself that your eyesight has been failing you lately. And should before you left, you put your glasses somewhere. So please be kind. Don't criticize my driving. You drive more quietly, you'll keep going. The passenger's son, who was about 25 or 27 years old, answered. You're right, Joshua, you're right. It's just that I'm not used to you growing up so quickly, and I'm getting older. Oh, if only Jana were here, she'd be proud of you, son. Yes, Dad, I would be proud, and both of us. After all, five years after her death, you and I finally got out somewhere together. And thank God that there are no quarrels so far. In response, there was only a heavy sigh and an equally heavy exhalation. According to the recording, the car was driving slowly, about 30 miles per hour. The sun was going down, so Joshua the Ford driver, as he put it himself, turned on the low beam headlights. One of the two of them turned on the radio in the car. The song Bad Blood by Radical Face started playing. However, an elderly man turned it off a minute later with the words, tasteless. Joshua just sighed heavily, but didn't say anything. Ten minutes later, a man broke the silence and said, I hope Laura will be happy with this asshole. Pap, what are you doing? Erwin is a normal guy. Personally, I liked him. You always liked all her men, and all of them sooner or later abandoned my girl with a broken heart. Either you're such a shitty brother or Laura really had a bad streak in her personal relationships. I am a normal brother, father. Joshua's voice had a steely edge. It's just that I'm always on Laura's side. Yes, some of her men did not always behave correctly towards her. But remember yourself, you also often criticized our mother. And he was also very jealous. Oh, just don't start your hurdy-gurdy, please. I love my wife, and you are well aware of that. And I'm not disputing your love, Dad. Joshua's voice interrupted the sound of the turn signal. The car smoothly turned somewhere to the right and moved on along an unknown road. It's just that you judge people, but you forget about yourself. God will judge me. When I die, then you can judge me all you want. And turn on the gas, 
otherwise we're going 40 miles an hour. There's an empty road here, in this godforsaken place. No cops are going to stop us. We'll make it. We'll be in Deming tomorrow morning for my sister and your daughter's wedding. I hope there won't be any of those stupid banana puddings. The old man grumbled. Joshua chuckled, but didn't say anything. The car drove in a straight line for 15 minutes. Before reaching the intersection with the traffic lights missing there, there was a sign careful down the road turn left. After 200 meters turn right, said a female voice with a hint of artificiality. Oh, your old lady is alive. Yeah, I've been silent all this time, and just now I decided to tell you where to go. Dad, please look, I might even turning off there. Joshua said, and stopped the car at the intersection. There, there. But you didn't even look at the route. Listen, there was a sign before the intersection, careful, cool road, and there's something there. I didn't see it, and your talking phone, or rather the electronic woman in it said the same thing. What we need, it is to the right. What else do you want from me? I just want you to look at the map on your phone. I don't understand phones. Either you turn right, or are you behind the wheel, without glasses and half blind. How do you like this prospect? It was clear from his voice that the old man was really angry. In response, Joshua sighed resignedly and began to turn right. The car was quiet again. The radio stopped playing before the intersection, and therefore two men were sitting in the car who clearly did not want to talk to each other. On the left and right sides of the car, bushes, cacti and boulders were rushing past. The road itself looked pretty worn and bumpy. There were bumps here and there on which the car bounced a little. A few minutes later, Joshua broke the silence. Dad, I think we took the wrong turn. As far as I remember, the road to Deming wasn't that completely broken. We're going the right way. As for the road, huge trucks drive here every day. Tractors, I'll even bet, National Guard tanks. That's the whole explanation for what's wrong with the road. But I don't see any of the above. Have you seen the time, my son? It's almost midnight. All self-respecting drivers have been sleeping in motels for a long time. But you and I, two half-wits, are going. I want to remind you, dear Marlow Smith, the young man's voice took on an intimation, as if he were currently reading a news bulletin in a television studio, that it was you who insisted on a trip without any motels. And the easiest thing for you is, do you want to sleep? So sleep, are you hungry? There's a bag of fruit, biscuits, and jerky in the back seat. Mr. Marlowe did not respond to his son's remark. Joshua himself didn't seem to want to continue this conversation. But after a minute, he picked up the phone. It was clear from the sounds of his smartphone. Apparently the guy was not one of those people who constantly keeps his gadget in silent mode. After a minute, the car stopped. After another 10 or so seconds, Joshua cursed and said, Dan, the navigator took us down the wrong road. According to him, we could wrong turn. Yes, according to his plan, we will reach another fork in an hour. But the road gets worse and worse with every mile we walk. I don't like it. I'm so sick of you whining all the time. At your age, I crushed crots on a tank in Normandy, in the rains and slush. And there's a road here. You know what? I'm sick of your complaining and snot. What a brat I've raised. I'll go and walk. After these words, Mr. Marlowe could be heard slamming the door loudly. A couple of seconds later, his silhouette was visible in the headlights. He was dressed simply, black trousers, a white shirt, with either a tie or a bow tie tied. In his hand, he held a cane with which he walked on. Joshua stayed in the car and cursed viciously for about 15 minutes. He remembered his father, his bad temper, and his own weakness. Only his mother and sister can calm him down and understand, but not me. I'm always annoying him, just like he annoys me. Well, let him walk through this godforsaken land. Cool darling, damn it. I wonder if it really said that. Joshua was talking to himself. Sounds were heard exactly on the DVR. It can be concluded that Joshua connected his smartphone to the device. After a few minutes, he said only damn, started the car, and began to pick up speed. The guy raced along the highway and did not stop cursing in a voice full of panic. He soon caught up with his old man. In the video, we can see that he was sitting leaning against a rock on the right side of the road. Joshua immediately left the car and rushed to his father. Unfortunately, the sound range of the video recording device does not reach the distance at which people were at that time. It was obvious from the gestures that the old man had lost consciousness. Joshua tried to shake him, but it was in vain. Then he ran into the car and with the words, fuck my lord, 
took out a bottle of water from his bag. He left the back door open. The guy threw half of the contents in his father's face, and he seemed to be slowly coming to his senses. A few minutes later, Mr. Marlowe got to his feet. At the same time, he did not even pick up the cane from the ground. Meanwhile, something crawled under the hood of the car. Something long and strange? Is it a snake? Unfortunately, the DVR does not have a night vision mode. It's hard to see, and there are no street lights. At the same time, the father and son were talking about something. But the words are still not heard, unfortunately. Then Joshua got into the driver's seat, and Mr. Marlowe began to walk back to the car. Previously, he looked into the lens of the DVR camera. And here's the strange thing. His face began to look somehow too peaceful. Well, you scared me, father. Joshua exclaimed with relief. I already thought that you would die here from cardiac arrest or something. I'm sorry I scared you, son. I really felt sick somehow, so I sat down by a rock and dozed off. The road is long. Conversations. How you say it in our language. In general, they are heavy. All this is exhausting. But I'm glad you're worried about us. Uh, I mean, you're worried about me. Mr. Marlowe's tone changed. Joshua just chuckled, not really paying attention to his relative's changes. Let's go to Deming, Dad. I'm going back to the main track now. We need to get out of here. We accidentally turned onto the Dan Road. Whatever you say, son. Where you go, we go. I mean, I'm with you. You started talking about something. Are you sure you're okay? That's right, that's right. Well, I'll take your word for it. Joshua turned the car around and drove in the opposite direction. But after a few minutes, Marlo broke the silence. Tell me, my dear and beloved Joshua, do you believe in aliens? I'm surprised you're asking this question, Dad. Heh, I do not even know. I believe that we are not alone in this universe. But I also believe that aliens have nothing to do on our planet. Why do they need us? Except as slaves. You're right about that, Mr. Marlowe replied pointedly. Well, since I'm right, although it's already strange that you admit it, I'll say the following. I'd rather resist than serve some little green men. Well, we're brown. I don't know what they are like there. You're right, Marlowe replied calmly. But what if they could use you, son? My life is more precious to me, Joshua replied calmly. Oh, I wish I had banana pudding now. Yes, Dad. Yes, I wouldn't mind either. I haven't eaten it for a long time. And that's right, Joshua said a little nervously. For the next few minutes, father and son drove in silence. But then the strangeness began. The car suddenly stalled and stopped. That's just not enough. No, 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 not that, damn. Swore Joshua and slammed both hands on the steering wheel. Is something wrong, son? Mr. Marlowe asked in a calm voice. The engine has stalled. At the same time, there was still enough fuel to drive at least 200 miles there and back. All the electronics are on, everything is working. But the car won't start. It's crazy. I'm going to see what's in there. You know, you sit there. I'll look in. After all, this is my car. And after saying that, Mr. Marlowe got out of the car. By the sound of the hood opening, Joshua pressed the button in the cabin to open it. Next, the camera lens was blocked by the iron cover of the car, which rose up. A little fuss started in the cabin. It seems Joshua opened the glove compartment and took something out. Then he closed it with a bang. At the same moment, the hood of the car came down and slammed shut. Old man Marlowe tapped on the lid, apparently signaling his son to try to start the car. Second, another, and the third time the engine started. After a while, the old man returned to the car and slammed the front passenger door behind him. I don't know what you did, Dad, but thanks. The car started up. The dust is clogged. I just cleaned it up a little bit. That's good. We can go now. And they set off down the road again. A couple minutes later, Joshua broke the silence. How did you even see something under the hood in such a dark place? There was a light bulb. I turned it on. Um, it's clear. A couple of minutes later, the car stopped. Mr. Marlowe, in the same calm and imperturbable voice, asked, Joshi, why did we stop? Because you're making me nervous. After I found you, you've been acting weird. Everything has changed in you. You walk without a cane, you see in the dark, and you smile strangely, almost blissfully. In your voice, you've never argued with me. Moreover, you call me something you haven't called me since my mother died. And puddings, you hate them with all your heart after the incident when the neighbor's cat pooped in one of them for you. So, who are you then? I'm your father. Can you see it? Stop fooling around, you bastard. Oh, the bastard then. Well, let's see how you talk now, son, old Marlowe said calmly. 
The sound of the car's glove compartment opening was heard again. Joshua chuckled. After a few more seconds, the glove compartment closed. Next, you can hear the click of the pistol being removed from the safety, and the guy's voice. Is that what you're looking for? I moved it while you were digging in the car. You've been giving yourself away from the very beginning, you disgusting creature. Now tell me, where is my father? I'm your father. Give me the gun, son. You are welcome. Otherwise, your father will have to punish you. Oh no. If you don't want to lose your life, then answer now. From the voice, you can judge that Joshua was nervous and afraid at the same time. Well, perhaps he can be understood. We have no other choice, son. To us? To whom? To us? You'll find out soon enough. When you become part of the swarm, I won't. Thanks to you. Whatever your name is, I've already heard my position. We are a swarm. We are squillings. And in a minute, you will be completely ours. You're wrong. I'll shoot you sooner than what the hell? No, no, I won't give in. Enough. Let me go. I won't get up. No, fucking. A shot rang out. A few minutes later, Mr. Marlowe got out of the car and headed somewhere to the left. He opened the driver's door and other sounds pulled Joshua down. And he began to drag him somewhere into the darkness. At the same time, old Marlowe had a snake sitting on his chest. Except he didn't look like our earthly snakes. This one was about the size of a medium-sized snake. Five minutes had passed, then ten, and a whole hour. But no one ever returned to the car. The recording continued until the car ran out of battery power. That's all. One question remains. Who are the Squillings? Today we have revealed to you only a part of the information about the aliens. There is much more data about their activities on Earth. On our channel, we will reveal all the secrets and evidence of their presence. Subscribe to the channel and send me your stories related to aliens by email. You will find contacts in the About the Channel section. Together, we will force the authorities of all countries to disclose all the information they have. After all, people should know the truth.